Hello everyone, it's Cassie and welcome back for another Trinity Stamps video. Today we're going to be making a mug card. I love making the mug cards and our new Warm Heart Stamps fits perfectly on our mug. So that's what we're going to be using. I do have some ink on three inks out there, but I end up not using all of those. Um, and we, of course, have to use the coffee mug card die. I went ahead and die cut that out on some watercolor paper. And now I'm just lining up the warm heart stamp inside my Misty, along with that little piece at the top that's supposed to symbolize the coffee, because I wanted to make sure that I didn't cover that. And I wanted to make sure I had room for it. And then we'll stamp that down using some blackout ink by Ink on 3. And I'll do it a couple times just to make sure that I have a good impression. And then I did stamp it again onto another piece of watercolor cardstock. I was going to watercolor, but changed my mind and decided to pull out my Prismacolor pencils. So that is what we're going to be doing. And I do love the look of Prismacolor on watercolor. It really grabs the pencil in a way that gives those pencil lines. And, you know, some people like that look, some people don't. I tend to really do like it. But Prismacolor, just like any colored pencil if you're going to layer it you have to work lightly in layers so I'm going very light-handed with my first color which is a very light pink I did not write down all the colors that I used but you could find some similar ones like I said this first one is just a light pink I'm gonna come in with a mid-tone pink and just add the color where I think there would be some shadowing and again being very light-handed because the whole point of Prisma color or any color pencils is to work in layers. And so I'm being very light handed so that I don't end up saturating is not the right word, but um, you can ha end up having a buildup of the color and then you can't color over it anymore. So now I'm coming in with my darkest color again, being very light handed. And then I'm going to go backwards using my mid pink. And I get a little bit heavier handed as I go along. And by the time I get my last color on or my last layer on, I'm mostly going pretty heavy handed, just trying to blend those colors. But I do love how color pencils can layer on top of each other. You get that pencil -y look, you know, the lead look almost, and then you get almost like a scratchy look, I guess. And then then it just blends so pretty. You could take this even a step further and you could bring in some sort of mineral spirits or um, Gamsol would work really well. But I choose just to use the colored pencil this time around, going over all those parts. And I did a really, a pretty decent job of blending that color, but I want that dark to be fairly dramatic. So I'm gonna bring it in one more time and really add that in there. All right, now I'll also bring in some of my white where there might be a highlight, so keep that in mind. And then I'm gonna bring in a green. And I'm only gonna use two colors for our green. We have a light, almost like a lime green, and then I'm gonna bring in a forest green. But I'm just counting, not counting, but going every other square for our green and being, again, light-handed. Then I'll come in with my darker green and it's pretty, um, it's, it's a very dramatic look that I have as of now. And what I'm gonna wanna do is soften that color a little bit. That's where bringing in the lighter color again does it. You'll notice it softens that color a little bit, makes those edges not so harsh. It almost sort of fuzzes the edges a little bit, which is a really cool look, especially if you're talking about, say, a scarf. Uh, it's a material, and so it would be a little bit fuzzy. And then I do decide I, I want to bring in that green just a little bit to add a little more depth there. So that's one way you can get even more mileage out of your pencils. You may not have all the colors, but you can add that drama by layering it up. And then I'll do the hat green, and we'll do the same process for it as well. For the other color, the other stripe, I decide to make it just a gray. So I'm bringing in a very light gray and I'll put that basically the same way I did the other. And then I'm going to blend that with white. So that'll soften those edges so that they're not quite as harsh. And we'll do it at the top as well. Now we can move on to our words. So I'm going to bring in three colors and I decided on purple and I'm gonna have a very light purple and we'll do the same process as we did before. 
I don't know what it is about these Love Danny images, but I love to make the words ombre, whether it be with my Copics or trying to do it with watercolor or whatever the case may be, I love to do it ombre. So I brought in a mid-tone, I'll bring in a darker color, and then I'm just gonna keep working and building that color up from there. You know, you go light, medium, dark, back to medium, back to light, and then, you know, just kind of fine tune it as you go along. And then for the words you and warm, I use just the mid-tone and the dark color that I used for the word heart. And we'll just kind of blend those out, make it a little bit softer. And when that's done, now we can move on to actually getting our cup ready to go. So I'm gonna bring in some mint tape, which is just like a masking tape that I'm using here, almost like a post-it. And I brought in the Trinity Teal along with a Blender Buddy. And I'm gonna blend that Trinity Teal all along the cup. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up about four times because it's a lot of blending. <laughs> because I really wanted to be careful. I didn't want any harsh lines and this Ink on 3 ink does blend beautifully and I'm able to get that almost like an ombre look from top down and bottom up and leaving that white space sort of in the middle or at least lighter tone in the middle. And then when I'm happy with how that's blended, we can peel away our tape but I'm going to keep that piece because remember I have my coffee part, that little oval for the top. So I'll flip it over and I'll stick down my coffee and then tape this down to my glass mat. And then I can bring in some Twiggy Brown along with my Brown Blender Buddy. And then I can just very easily blend this color onto the oval and making it a little darker on the left and right hand side and kind of leaving it a little lighter in the middle. And when I'm happy with that, then we can now attach it to the top of our cup. Just using a little bit of liquid glue. And then we can bring in our matching dies for all the words and our heart. And we can run that through our die cutting machine. Like I said, I love that there's matching dies that will cut that all out. I'm gonna reinforce that score line with my ergonomic folder, bone folder. And then I can add a little bit of foam tape to our heart. And you could go crazy and add foam tape to all the words if you wanted, but I choose not to. Just the heart. So we'll peel off that release paper and pop that right over the heart we had stamped. And then we'll do the same thing for our other words, but this time just using some liquid glue. You could go even crazier and add some gems if you wanted to. Or imagine the heart having some crystal um, glossy accents over the top. Wouldn't that be something? but I don't do any of that. I'm gonna leave this fairly simple. And once our words are attached down, that's gonna finish off our card. I love how this turned out. And I love that I use watercolor paper with it. It makes the card that much more substantial because it's like 140 pound watercolor paper. So there you have it. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye everybody.